Okay, we are recording. So I saw a video tutorial on getting Unity ready for Steam, but it was around three years old and I went over like four videos. It was quite long. Uh, I'll put a video uh, link to it in the description, but I thought I'd make my own one and try to be a bit quicker, which is not my forte. So first things first, I'll get right into it. Once you've got your Steamworks account set up, you paid the submission fee, whatever, you've got your game set up and ready to go. We're just going to be going over the file itself this time. Obviously, you have to do all this other stuff like setting up the store page. But once you've done all these things and just have to do the build itself, you're going to go into your store page, you're going to find your ID there, and then we're going to open a new tab and go steamworks.net. Go to this one. This link doesn't work. To the GitHub link. Go installation, Unity installation. Download Unity package from releases, and that's what you want to do. You want to go right here, click that, and download the Unity package. It's super easy to do with um, Unity, as most things are with this engine. It's very uh, new friendly, which I love. Once you have it, uh, click it to open it, and make sure you have your actual project open when you do this, and that will bring up the whole dialogue. Uh, maybe I'll do it now. I don't know if hopefully it doesn't break anything. See, so I'll show the package or prepare the package, and I've already done this, so I won't install it again, but you just press um, import there and it'll go through the process. So you'll see here I've just created an empty game object, object to create uh, hold the APIs and then I've made another one called Steam Manager and on that you just add component Steam Manager and that's all built in with the um, the package. So if we open that up we get to this and again this is something that was outdated in his video he was like oh make sure you're using it and then if not disable it but it actually does that for you. So you'll see here if uh, this game is running Android or iOS or any of these things uh, will say don't enable Steamworks so we'll define disable Steamworks if not so just uh, if not disable Steamworks then we'll go through it so basically that all that does is built in for you you don't have to worry about it it will deactivate Steamworks if the platform is not available if it is available on PC then it'll go through with it so we want to go to the awake function and we want to scroll down to this this is where we want to put our app, app ID so we want to replace T invalid with this. So what this is our app ID number that I showed you we got from here from our actual Steamworks store because every app has a app ID. And then um you need to make sure you put brackets this app ID. So what, what this is doing is casting it as an app ID, so it's not just an integer. This is actually an app ID. And honestly, that's it. Now we have Steam set up with the um the game with we have the game set up with Steam, sorry, and we can once we play it, we can press like Shift Tab, and it'll show that we're playing this game, this app ID in Steam, and we, I'm pretty sure we can just upload it from there. Yo, it's Armand from the future. I forgot that you need to go into your game's root directory, so where everything's held. You can just right-click the Assets folder in Unity and say Show in Explorer, and um, there's a app ID, and you have to change this by default. I think it's 480 for the space game that it's just set to. You need to put your app ID there, otherwise it will not work. And then you just restart Steam, and then it should show up that you're playing your game. And yeah, then you can go back to your regular, what I was doing, the achievements, store, down to community presence, achievements. Right, recording. So I uh, ended up making way more achievements. I just made all of them because I was just felt like doing it. I already was doing one. As you can tell by the time outside, it's been a minute. So here's what you put in. You just put in the API name that you use in code, and then you put the title of the description, a uh, title of the achievement, and the description of the achievement. That's going to be seen by the player, and then uh, two icons: one for un one for locked and one for unlocked. And I've just done that all the way, just named them zero 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 one and so on. So getting into the achievement script itself. If we go into API, you'll see I've made another manager called Achievement Manager. We'll just go into that and show you what this does. So I tried to make this more expandable. The guy in the video just did Steam IDs, but I'm trying to... I might be going into Android later, so I put this here just as an addition. So instead of just passing a Steam ID from the achievement to this file, I instead pass an integer, which is the index for this list of... Uh, struct. So I just have a system serializable pu public struct, so I can make uh, all these. Basically, I've got an uh, I've got an array, I've got an array of these achievement IDs, and you'll see I've literally just pasted the Steam ID into them. So it's the same Steam ID 
from the website that I put in on Steamworks. Uh, except now we have a slot for an Android ID. So if we do develop for Android, we can expand on that. It's just nice to make expandable code. So the unlock achievement, as I said, takes in an index from whatever is going to unlock an achievement. So for this example, I've got it as this machine gun. So when I click this, it will buy a machine gun and it will say, oh, okay, this is the first time we bought a machine gun. We will try, or anytime you buy a machine gun, it will try to unlock this achievement. So we'll send the index of zero, which is this one, weapon MG, zero, zero, weapon MG, which is this achievement. It will try to unlock this achievement. And it does that by going into this, uh, is actually unlocked equals false. So it sets it, sets it by default, although that's not actually necessary. And switch platform just is just a switch statement based on which platform we're on. So by default, it's Steam. And I've actually set this up in the Steam Manager here. And if we're using uh, Android, we'll just have another case for Android. Or for how, however many stores you're, however many achievement systems you're doing, you can, have, you can switch on this. It makes it nice and easy. So we're just really focused in this. So the first thing you do is test Steam Achi, which is my own function here, and it just uses a Steam user stats dot get achievement, and it takes in the ID, and this is the actual Steam ID, not the index, and it puts the output to is actually unlocked, which is this boolean. So what this does is takes it in the Steam ID, as you can see here, so it gets the achievement IDs at the index that we pass in, and then it gets the Steam ID at that index. And it says, okay, is this achievement unlocked? And if it, and return the result into this Boolean, which we can use down here. And we need to do this. We can't just try to unlock it straight away because if you'll read the documentation, it says you can't set achievements until the callback has been received. So you actually do need to do this. So we get that. This is just a debug to see if whether or not it is unlocked. And then we go, if it's not unlocked, then we go into Steam user set, set achievement. Set achievement is to... Uh, give them the achievement. Clear achievement is obviously to relock the achievement, which I've just done here. Obviously, users can't do this. This is just for debugging purposes, but it's just the same thing. But it says clear achievement instead of set. So then we go Steam user, Steam user stats, set achievement, and again we get the achievement ID list. We get the index here, and then we say set this achievement. So that achievement, the achievement with that. ID will be set to true. So that, that essentially just gives them the achievement. This is important. We need to store the stats. Otherwise, it'll only happen once we actually close the game. And we obviously don't want that. So we want to store it as soon as we can. And if we go into Unity. OK, uh, so you'll see all the, st the steam there. Everything's locked. If we play as soon as we click this and, and click through my glorious dialogue. Awesome. What structures like? Why don't you just? You'll see that it immediately unlocks, and you actually even get the little pop up there. <laughs> you can't see the pop up; my face is covering it. But um, you get the you get the achievement immediately. So that's how easy it is to get achievements done. You, if you're not looking to deploy to Android, you don't have to have this at all. You don't have to. I've just made this struct, and then I've made achievement. <laughs> yeah, I like how because uh, of camel cases spaced out. But you don't need to do that. You can literally just pass the achievement straight from wherever you're unlocking it. Hello, it's Armin from the future. I uh, made a little leaderboard manager as well, but it's quite long, so I'm not actually going to go into it. I'm just going to upload the code to the website and you can use it if you want, but I'm not going to explain how all this stuff works. It basically stores stuff in a cool result and then uh, goes back and forth. I'll put some documentation up if you want to read up on it, but this is just what it works, how it works anyway. So I've got two debug buttons set up. The first one sets a score. The current score I have on my character is 30, so I actually need to up it to 35. And if I do that and I press debug 1, we'll see uh, score 35 has changed 1 instead of 0, so 1 is true, so it has changed. If I click it again, you'll see it has changed 0 because obviously it doesn't change lower. You can set it so it always changes. If you put this, um, change this from method keep best there, if you change that to Force update, it should always change. I haven't tried it. And beyond that, there is a button for finding the scores. So if I press this, you'll see it says 
um, my username, the score, and the rank, and it should it should say this for each um, result that it finds, but obviously it didn't. So um, yeah, it is what it is. I wonder why this result keeps incrementing up. Maybe um, maybe that's just called as an iterator. Uh, yeah, that's how that works. So down here is the information that you'll be using. So you have the username from Steam, get friend, persona name. And um, yeah, actually the, the searching the leaderboard, each leaderboard entry gives you the user identifier as opposed to the name. So you have to go through this. I'm not entirely sure if it always works or if it only works if the user is in your friends list, but no big deal. And then you get the score and you get the rank so you can um, display that however you want on your UI. So yeah, that's uh, all there is to this. The other thing, to, only other thing to mention is that since uh, this is called on awake, uh, trying to use Steam stuff on Awake, we want to make sure that the Steam is actually um, up and running at this point. So I've um, made sure that the script execution order for the, for the leaderboard manager is later than default. So the whole Steam thing should be running at this point. But yeah, hopefully this helps. I'll put this code up on the website for you to use at your leisure. Okay. So onto the build, what we want to do is go to filed, file, not build and run, just file uh, build settings, because I think build will also run it. And you want to just build it through here. Once that happens, you will get a pop up with your build. It will look something like this. So it will look something like this with your application inside it. And the next step is to upload it to Steam. So if we go to Steam, the first step is general, insta general installation, under installation, and you want to change all this stuff up. So make sure the uh, it doesn't just say game.exe, you want your actual application name, which here is above the stars.exe. And then launch, which is by default, and I'm only working in Windows, etc., etc. Now, if we go into builds, we'll see that there's nothing here. If you have a relatively small build, which I actually have, I think my build's like 150 megs, you can just upload it as a zip file. If um, not, you have to use the Steam pipe itself. So, there we go. Steamworks SDK, upload your content. You can download the latest version here. So you just download that, open that. I've already got it here and drag the SDK somewhere. So we need this to upload the actual game files to Steam. So there you go, just dragged it straight to there, that's the SDK. From here we go into Tools, we go into Content Builder, and we need to change a few things. So first thing first, we're actually gonna put our content into the thing. So we go into Content, and originally this file won't be here, this Windows content, I made this, made it myself. You don't need to if you're not deploying to multiple platforms but again it's nice to make things expandable and this is just easier if you're gonna maybe one day build for Mac. So I've dragged my build here as I said. Now for what we need to actually change. We need to go into the scripts folder and open up these two which I've done here in um, we've done here. So we have the app build and the deep put build, a depot build, I always pronounce the T, I don't know why, and uh, uh, originally it's going to be like a thousand and a thousand and one, you want to replace these numbers, I don't think you need to replace it on the file because it just reads the file, but it, uh, it's just easy, just replace it on the file because you have to reference it in other places, and we can get the numbers again, so there's the app ID, is the ID here, oh, sorry, is the ID here, and the D depot ID is it's generally just I believe it's just one on top but you can always see by going into steam pipe at depot and uh, there it is there that little three one blah 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 so that's my depot ID it's not too much to change on this side of things you just put the app ID here you put a little description there so version 1.0 and I'll actually put the date here as well what was it 20 10 16 so 2020 10, 16. And then you can leave everything else the same, just ignore it. And here we want to put the, again, the 
depot, depot, um, identifier, and the actual file name. So if we change the file name here, we want to change it here as well. Then up here, let me save this. On this side, it's much the same. We want to change the depot ID. Can ignore all this. This is what's important. We need to get the content root, and that is this folder here. So we go content, it's this folder here. So I just copy and pasted this here, plus a uh, backslash there. I'm not sure the backslash is necessary, but here's what it is. And again, if you don't use a local path, you don't, this will be blank by default. If you don't have a local path, you don't need to do this. If you do, if you don't want what I done, you made a subfolder for Windows content in particular, you put dot, so it's uh, reading inside that path, backslash Windows content, backslash, and then uh, star or asterisk is basically um, an, uh, like an identifier for everything. So everything in this folder will be uploaded. And you can leave everything else as is as well. The last thing you need to change, uh, once you have the those scripts set up and the files set up, you can look at this run build.bat. So traditionally there is a um, an actual like command line editor, but they, they would be nice enough to do all this for you. So you get something that looks like this. Oh, shit, I thought I'd fucking... <laughs> I changed this to account and password, because that's what it is by default. And I, <laughs> I cheat whatever. So, um, <laughs> so it'll look like this, account, password, and um, you just replace your account here and your password here, and then you can just run it like that. Sorry, before I forget, you need to make sure this like, this file is correct. This is in the scripts file. So app build and then your um, ID. Um, I, I actually changed this and then didn't save it so I could show you without having to blur anything out, but I've left my password here so now I have to still blur it out. And I also took off quit as well, just so I can see what it looks like afterwards. Don't save. So if we run that, Shows it there as well. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I've got to make really got to make sure. And here, I've got to make sure to uh, blur all this out. If you have a two FA, you're gonna have to put that in here. Mine's on my phone. Yep. Don't think you need caps. So allow access, and it will now read all this stuff. So it's reading the app ID build, reading the depot, and it's going to do all this. So I will skip ahead. All right, we have done it. The, uh, God, I've got way too much hair. It's crazy. The um, build was successful. You put in uh, all the stuff and it does it. And usually it would quit, but as I got rid of that line, so I'm going to press escape. I'm just going to close it. Uh, builds. Yes, it worked. So we have the build here. And in order to actually um, push it to the default build, we'll need to go here, select set build live on branch default. There's a description, there's the ID, preview change. And set build live now. We can put an internal comment, I'll say first, build, exclamation mark. Set build live. Yes. And I believe we have to publish this, just like we did. Do we put, uh, you have to publish the um, achievements as well, by the way. Hopefully no one's following this tutorial piece by piece. <laughs> just, why, why can't I get the achievements? You have to publish all these changes. And you can see uh, what changes we've made by seeing view diffs. No uncommitted app data for blah, blah, blah. Prepare for publishing. Publish to Steam. Oh, there you go. It's a bit late there. And when you, whenever you make a final publish to the public, you'll actually have to put this little code in to make sure you've done it. First build up exclamation mark really publish. And now we are ready, ladies and gentlemen. So that is how you go from Unity to Steam. I'm pretty sure that I've done it all. Can <laughs> we delete a lot of this stuff? If we press install, will that work? 1.52 megabytes, next, agree. It's doing it, lads. We're installing our game. Finish. 
I'm gonna skip through all this. Oh, mate. Beautiful music that is this game. <laughs> Made the song myself. It's kind of average. I think it makes this nicer little mini song. Oh, beautiful. Commander? Wake up, Commander. Oh, good. I thought we'd lost you. You so, hit your head pretty badly in the last attack. Frankly, the amount of blood was quite impressive. So bad. I don't want to hear it. That's just too much. But yeah, that's how you get a game from... Uh... <laughs> God damn, I've got the debug button there. Alright, well, I have to <laughs> deal with that. I could have sworn I made it so that doesn't show up when I build. Only, only so it shows up in the editor, but I guess I didn't. Boom. Now we don't have the uh, achievement so we can re-unlock it. Nice! A few more of these cops and ships. Click the planet itself. I need to change the volumes as well. The uh, music should be down by default. Like that. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope hope this helped. Um, awesome! Like that there you go, get the little achievement. And uh, it has all the stuff, of course. Shift tab, you get the Steam overlay. And yeah, that is a full Steam integration. In not, uh, we didn't spend too long on this video, like hopefully like 20 minutes. Updated for 2020. Thanks for watching and uh, have a great day.